Hey guys, this is Brox, just throwing together a quick video on Diablo 4 about what is going to be the most powerful combination in the game um, before this gets out to the masses and people are trying to figure out where this came from. Um, something I put together today, I went into looking at theory crafting for Rogue and started playing around with some things today just for fun, right? I feel like I was burnt out on, on Barb, I was burnt out on Druid, and I was burnt out on Sork and, and I didn't really care for Necro. Um, so I was just playing around with some, some rogue things today, and I think I stumbled on what is going to be the most powerful build in the game. And I feel that not only is this going to be the first thing that clears world first, both on softcore or hardcore, uh, this combination is viable for both. I think if the professionals that are going to be doing uh, teams aren't running this, they're going to lose the race to world first. This is without question in all the theory crafting I've done, all the classes I've done, this combination is by far and away ahead of everything else. Um, not only that, I think that it's, it's viable with just a singular rogue. It gets stronger as a duo and it gets maximized value at a four-man squad. So it, the more players you have in this combination, the more powerful it gets. So let's jump in and take a look at it. First, you're going to be surprised to see that we're not taking a look at a rogue. Um, I first wanted to introduce you to the most powerful single character in the entire game. This is going to be the hardest hitting greatest power build in Diablo 4 as the game sits today um, obviously we don't know what's going to happen when 1.0 drops or you know what other legendaries will be in the game there's there's a bunch of things we don't know but as it sits right now you are looking at the strongest character in Diablo 4 so let's talk about why that is you're going to notice right away that we have a very powerful uh, 1 out of 5 pulverize uh, and a 17 DPS or more recently I think it was 12 DPS hurricane um, and that's it. Uh, we're, we're not taking any other skills, we're not taking any other ultimates. Um, we are quite literally just taking our pulverize and our hurricane and we're taking trample for movement and then we were taking Bulwark, Debilitating Roar, um, and then our, our Generator here uh, for Storm Druid. So obviously I'm being a little sarcastic uh, in, in regards to <laughs> looking at this. It, this is, however, truthfully the most powerful uh, character in the entire game, and I'm going to explain why. So this is a Z Druid for a four-man build, and the Z Druid's whole purpose is to not die. So this is super high, uh, hardcore viable. Um, this is why I said this is most likely going to be the most uh, efficient way to be world first is because this is a very hardcore viable build for the Druid and it's designed for a four-man squad. His sole purpose is to not die. Uh, so everything here is just defensive. So we're taking Bulwark, we're taking Debilitating Roar uh, for the heal and Fortify, we're taking Bulwark for the Unstoppable and the Fortify, we're taking Hurricane for uh the ability to make enemies vulnerable but also to push them back and uh, to slow them trample we're taking that for fortify uh, and for defenses and then everything that we're taking on the passive side is for defense so we're taking uh spirit generation so that we can keep up everything non-physical resistances uh physical resistances uh, damage reduction when we pop defensive skills we have two so this will be up almost all the time. We're going to uh, be immobilizing enemies, and I'll explain how we're going to do that in a little bit. Um, we're going to be shape-shifting a lot because, again, we have two uh, or three wear skills. So as we shape-shift uh, in and out of our forms, we can generate spirit. While we're in our any of the wear bear forms, especially Depilitating Roar, which is going to trigger some healing, we're going to get uh, bonus healing and then down here this is again just more ways to to strengthen ourselves up so shape shifting will fortify us for more so it just amplifies every time we shape shift we're going to get more fortify 
and then we get 12% uh, reduction from elites um, whenever we're in a werebear state or a werebear skill. And then down here, we're just grabbing this for the bonus maximum life. Uh, we're not really taking it for the damage. Um, we're just taking it for the maximum life. Over here, we're taking the ability for our storm skills, which is primarily Hurricane, to uh, trigger vulnerable more often. And then we want Hurricane to last as long as possible. So we want this to be up as long as it can be. Um, I think this brings it up to roughly 9.4 seconds uh, uptime of the 20 second cooldown. Um, so this is kind of the build for the four man druid side. Again, the whole purpose for this character is just not to die. Um, it just needs to survive, but it is also going to be the hardest hitting character in the entire game. And it's gonna do that because of this right here. The absolute most broken uh, build in, in Diablo 4 right now. So this is a poison trap rogue. And it is designed to do one thing and one thing only, and is and that is to maximize the value of Infiltrator's Aspect. So Infiltrator's Aspect is going to allow you to stay in concealment and put down all four of your traps, your four trap cap, while you're in concealment. And then when you break stealth, they will activate and then your poison traps will go down on a cooldown. Now, I've got mixed feedback on how this passive uh, work or this aspect works on a two handed weapon. It's more, it's probably going to be most efficient to have this actually on the bow and swap these two. Um, but for right now, I'm just leaving it as is until that can get confirmed because it's a aspect where the lower value is better. And the way two handed works is they double the value of whatever is on them. So I don't know how that works when it's a negative value increase. So I don't know if five becomes like 2.5 or if five becomes zero. It, it's very unclear how this would actually work on a two-hander. That would require someone who's tested it or, or someone to come forward and actually show what it looks like on a two-hander. Um, if it negatively brings that number down by half, so five becomes 2.5, you absolutely put this on uh, the two-hander and you swap smiting over to your one-hander. Um, Smiting is here for the 80% increased crowd control duration. I'm going to explain why that's important in a second. Um, and then Noxious Ice is another big component to this. So chilled enemies poisoned by poison imbuement will be further chilled for 20% per second. You may look at that and be really confused because we don't have poison imbuement on our bar. We do not use poison imbuement. We are only taking this for the second component of this, which is you deal 10 to 25% additional poison damage to frozen enemies. That's going to be the value that is actually important uh, for Noxious Ice. Um, for the rest of the aspects here before we get into the build, Umbral is here to generate resource for crowd control enemies. We're going to be crowd controlling everything. Um, it, you know, as we get to bosses, this becomes far less efficient on bosses, but for clearing the bosses, it's very efficient. Edge Masters, obviously, um, is a fantastic aspect for everybody. So at your primary resource cap, you do 20% additional damage. We're going to take Ghostwalker's aspect to become ridiculously fast. Um, so Concealment is going to give us a move speed benefit. Uh, and we're just going to become even more fast while we're in concealment. That's going to be super beneficial for running through dungeons and speed and efficiency. This goes back to four man squads trying to get world first. You want to be fast, fast, right? You have to be super, super quick. Um, so this is going to be the way that is going to maximize speed and efficiency for four man squads trying to get to world first. Next component is Aspect of Disobedience, one of the best aspects in the game, period, and the discussion. It just gives an incalculable amount of DR, um, you know, as you scale up your strength, as you scale up armor. This just adds more to that. Armor is a direct relation to damage reduction, which on rogues, which is the biggest problem with rogues, is survivability and damage reduction. This is one of the most valuable aspects in the game currently for rogues. You can also get it from the codex. Um, Mangler's lucky hit dealing direct damage to vulnerable enemies uh, has a 45% to daze them. Just a survivability component. Um, you know, again, something to keep mobs 
uh, you know, from doing damage to you. Exploiters, you have 20% uh, increased crowd control duration. This is very important. And then if enemies become unstoppable, your damage that you do to them becomes more effective. This obviously won't work on bosses um, because bosses don't become unstoppable. They just have crowd control limiters. Uh, but for, again, trash clearing, if someone gets loose, you just start doing way more damage to them before they get to you. And then the uh, helmet, we're going to do shared misery. When you hit a crowd controlled enemy, there is up to 50% chance for crowd control effect to spread to another unaffected enemy. So again, if we miss someone or someone doesn't get hit by the initial crowd control, this gives us a 50 per, you know, lucky hit 50% chance that that other mob also gets tagged by the crowd control, which as we just went through has stacking benefits. We're going to take uh, increased damage over time on all our weapons, of course. We're going to take maximized life in our gear, and then we're going to take uh, all res or whatever the res benefit at the end of the game is. If you know it's very fire heavy for the final pinnacle boss, then you would obviously swap these gems out for whatever gives you the most survivability versus whatever you're fighting at the time. This is probably going to be, for anybody watching this video, the most dynamic gem set that you're going to use. You're going to constantly be swapping these out based on what you're fighting. So looking at the skills, so we're going to take Shadow Clone, we're going to take Concealment, we're going to take Caltrops, we're going to take Dark Shroud for survivability, we're going to take Twisting Blades, I'll explain why in a second, and then we're going to take our primary damage source, which is Poison Trap. We're also going to use Preparation. Um, preparation is not going to do really much for us on the first part of the definition, but the second part is crucial. So using an ultimate skill resets the cooldowns of all your other skills. This is where tech is going to come into play. And we're going to do a whole heaping ton of damage uh, with just this uh, proc. All right, let's get into the skill tree. So skill tree, you have flexibility for your basic skills. I just put puncture because puncture uh, slows on third hit. Um, so it's just another benefit to keep mobs away from you or keep mobs CC'd. If you want to use blade shift so you can teleport, uh, like another free teleport to move or jump to another mob just to keep yourself moving forward. This is kind of like lunging strike for barbs. Um, that's perfectly fine. This is really user preference. Twisting blades. You'll see we're not taking this uh, five out of five. We're literally taking it just for this. Advanced Twisting Blades uh, is here to reduce the cooldown on all of your other skills. Um, this is going to be very efficient if, going back here, if Infiltrator's Aspect gets reduced by half on a two-handed weapon so that it becomes 2.5 second cooldown, you just need to proc this a couple of times to reset uh, your your entire poison trap right so the benefit of twisting blade is really to throw it out hit as many enemies as possible and then get that reduced by up to three seconds obviously if it's 2.5 on a two-handed weapon three seconds resets your poison trap so in one throw potentially um, you could reset your entire poison trap cooldown so this is very effective this is why we're using it it's just a utility skill to get our cooldowns back um, again Rogues have problems with survivability, so we're going to grab the 12% close damage reduction in case something gets near us. Uh, we have more damage reduction. Caltrops, we're taking this purely for the chill. So they do cold damage, and it now chills for 20% per second. This will eventually freeze. That kind of affects uh, our noxious ice. So when we go back over here, and we see this, that you deal 10 to 25% more poison damage to frozen enemies. Caltrops is what is helping us proc that freeze. So we're going to drop our Caltrops. That's going to slow down enemies. We want them to sit in our poison trap. We want them to sit in our Caltrops when they proc so that they get chilled and then they get frozen. Then when we get down here, we're going to take Agile. Uh, one point agile, so using cooldowns increases your dodge chance for 4%. This isn't really the big value here. It's while stealth, you heal for 6% of your maximum life. So if you take any damage, by the time you get back in concealment, we can heal back some of that lost damage um, value very quickly. So this is a very, very valuable skill. Um, I believe concealment is four seconds, so you would get 6% of your health four times. Then, of course, we're going to take Concealment 5 out of 5 to get uh, the cooldown as, as low as we can. And what this skill essentially does is it makes you vanish from sight. 
you're in an improved state, so you can't be popped out of this via damage. Um, and then you become unstoppable and you get 30% move speed. So this is huge, right? So for that four seconds, you get unstoppable plus 30% move speed. As I go back here and mention ghost walkers, you get another 25% move speed bonus on top of that for the same duration. So every time you pop concealment for that four seconds, you're getting 25% plus another 30%. You're going to be moving incredibly fast. Um, so that's going to allow you uh, to also, this is a key factor of concealment, move through enemies. So basically, again, for efficiency sake, to getting to world first, to being the first team to take down the pinnacle boss, you want to be able to just run through dungeons, right? Get to the bosses, clear the bosses out, kill everything. So this is going to allow you to speed through dungeons, get past the trash that you don't have to deal with, get right to whatever the objective is, get the objective, get to the boss, kill the boss, move on to the next dungeon. Using any attack skill breaks concealment. So our attack skill that's going to break concealment is Twisting Blades. You'll see that we don't have any other attack skills in this build um, besides uh, Puncture. But for, for this sake, um, Twisting Blades is what you're going to use. Because as soon as you break concealment, you want your Twisting Blades resetting your cooldown on Poison Trap. So you want to use it to get that cooldown immediately back. We're also going to get uh, 40 energy when we enter concealment so that we, we're ready to proc Twisting Blades when we're done. And then the skill that breaks uh, concealment always makes enemies vulnerable for six seconds. If this obviously passes through multiple enemies, all those enemies would be vulnerable. The next thing that we're going to take is the most broken skill in the entire game. Um, and, and this is where this gets out of hand so we're going to take poison trap poison trap has a 482 percent modifier um that 482 percent modifier is over nine seconds to enemies in the area you can lay four of these traps down at once that's four times 482 percent damage um those ticks will stack those stacking ticks will hit the you know whatever the unit or the boss at the same time um, Poison Trap also knocks down enemies for 1.5 seconds when it activates. That's fantastic because that's going to combine with our chill stacks. So knockdown enemies will take a little bit more of that chill effect to get frozen. And then dealing 10% increased poison damage to enemies standing inside your Poison Trap. So if they get frozen inside the Poison Trap, they take an increased 10% damage you know, on top of the 482% damage. So we're going to roughly round this up and say this is almost 500% damage per trap. We're going to come back to the tech on this. So we're also going to grab exploit. You deal 18% increased damage while you're healthy. Uh, or I'm sorry, increased damage to healthy and injured enemies. Um, so essentially, if you're fighting a boss and it, you're at the very start of the fight, you're going to use this. You're going to get 18% increased damage on top of the 482% uh, damage. Um, and then you deal 9% increased damage to vulnerable enemies. Uh, this is where that tech with uh, multiple people comes into play. If your druid hurricane is proccing vulnerable on the boss or the uh, enemies, which it should be because it's an AoE effect, then you also get an additional 9% increased damage to whatever the target is to go with your poison trap. This is another 27% increase on this 492 damage, right? So 10%, uh, 482, and then a, another stack of you know 27% additional damage here from these two notes. Extremely valuable uh, multiplicative stacking that's going on, and there's so much more of that coming. Um, we're going to take Dark Shroud for survivability. <clears throat> uh, one of the best survivability items for the rogue uh, you're basically going to use this just in case you take uh, like a large aoe shot hopefully this will keep you alive um, while concealment won't break when you take damage you can still take damage you are not immune in concealment so you can be invisible but if the boss does some giant one shot aoe and you don't have dark shell you're, you're gonna die right in, in hardcore that's not a that's a gg no comeback so dark shroud's a must especially if you're gonna play hardcore get it maxed out to get the max damage reduction um 
then you obviously have the 10% chance that it doesn't get consumed. And then while at least four are active from Dark Shield, you gain 8% increased critical strike chance. I found that just to be a little bit better than the move speed because we're already going to be super, super fast. Um, th this 4% really isn't... I mean, the 4% times 7, you could take it if you wanted to be even faster. Um, you know what? Truthfully, it's... It, Probably again for just getting through dungeons, it may actually be better. So let's save that. We'll make a quick change. So yeah, so for each uh, active shadow, you get four percent increased uh, increased go. You have five protective shadows, so it's another twenty percent move speed. So again, so you get thirty here, twenty here, and then another. I think it was like twenty or twenty-five from Ghost Walkers. So jumping down here, you deal 9% increased poison damage. So that's another 9% multiplier on the 482% and then the other 27% up here. Then poison enemies deal 15% less damage. This is another form of damage reduction. So especially good on bosses and elites. This is just going to reduce the amount of damage they can do to you. You deal 15% increased damage to chilled enemies. This bonus is increases to 30% against frozen enemies. So this is another 15% multiplier thanks to Caltrops. And then obviously if uh, Caltrops ends up freezing the target, then you deal an additional 30%. You're gonna see, you're starting to see how this is all stacking up uh, for good old poison trap here. So then we go down here and we're gonna grab Shadow Clone. So Shadow Clone creates a mimic and it mimics your actions for 15 seconds. The Shadow Clone deals 60% of your damage. You are unstoppable for five seconds after casting Shadow Clone. You're never gonna guess this. That goes with Ghost Walkers to make you fast uh, again. So you're going to be fast for another five seconds. And then your Shadow Clones deal an additional 20% of your damage, um, making this roughly 80% of your total damage. We're going to take one point in lucky hit up to 10% chance to gain eight energy on, a, on, I guess, just any lucky hit. And then we're going to take non-physical damage. You deal has a 15% increased lucky hit chance. Poison Trap is a non-physical spell. So we are going to take this to give us a higher uh, lucky hit chance um, because uh, poison trap only has a lucky hit chance of 20% so this increases that quite a bit so that we can take exposure so dealing direct damage to an enemy affected by a trap skill has up to 25% chance to reduce the active cooldowns of your trap skills and drop a cluster of exploding stun grenades and deal 40% physical damage and stun enemies for 0.5 seconds this adds to all the crowd control benefits from the aspects we just talked about but more importantly it also helps reset the the cooldowns for your traps so what is the tech that is happening here that is making this the most broken thing in the game besides the fact that you can already see that the multipliers are getting out of hand right away well the trick in the tech is is that we are going to basically pop concealment uh, well uh, let's start from the beginning you're gonna put dark shroud on so you don't die then we're going to pop concealment and we're going to lay down four traps. So thanks to infiltrators aspects, those traps will have no cooldowns um, and uh, no arm time. So you can throw them down, they'll immediately explode. As soon as you do your first round of that, so your first round of concealment and four traps, you are then going to immediately pop Shadow Clone. And what Shadow Clone is going to do is it is going to then use preparation to reset all of your cooldowns on your other skills, which means your concealment and your poison traps that just went on cooldown are going to be immediately back up. So once they are immediately back up, we're gonna repop concealment and we're gonna drop another four poison traps that are going to immediately arm and immediately explode onto the target, except for our shadow clone is going to do the same thing. That means, if you've done your quick math, we are going to do 12 times 500 and something percent worth of damage Im immediately onto the target. 12 times this amount. Now, that is before we get to Paragon boards, which have ample amounts of nodes that amplify multiplicatively different uh, modifiers for being crowd controlled, for being trapped, so enemies affected by trap skills, trap damage, 
uh, again, trapped enemies take additional damage. So all these nodes in here in the Paragon board are more multipliers, like 12.5% damage to, to additional enemies that get added up. So if we jump over to the stat side, right, for each of our poison traps, each poison trap will get these benefits, right? So this is this is in beta, so how accurate this is, it, it depends, but we're using this as rough napkin math right now, right? So each poison trap of the 12, so of the 12, each one of them will get 70% vulnerable damage, 65% pure damage, 41.5% damage to elites, 62.5% damage to healthy targets. If the target survives miraculously what I'm about to tell you, then you will do an additional 35% once they are injured, but we're going to focus on the 62.5 additional multiplicative damage while they're healthy. 112% additional damage if they're crowd controlled. If the boss gets staggered at any point during, um, you know, if it's a long boss fight or a multi-phase boss fight and it ends up getting staggered, this is the multiplier that happens during the stagger phase. For any other mob in the game, this is what is happening 100% of the time when they get chilled, frozen, or stunned, um, or slowed. They take this 112% additional multiplier. 29% additional multiplier multiplicative damage to trap targets, 43.5 additional damage from skills, and then another 45% damage from traps. So you can see this is almost another 500% multiplicatives that will go with the other 500% multiplicatives times 12, times 12. So how does this equate to the most powerful combo in the entire game? Well, it's very simple. So if you have, let's say, three rogues on a team all running this, it no longer becomes 12 poison ticks on the boss that are multiplied by all these multipliers. It becomes 36 stacks of poison that are multiplied by this. Now, before I get to the the big coup de gras, the secret sauce here, I want to do some math on what that means. So let's say we use a thousand base damage and I'm going to lowball this just to make life easier for everybody on this video and for myself. And I'm just going to lowball that all the modifiers, um, you know, for, for the initial poison trap are 500%, right? So we're going to say times, uh, it, essentially it, it's going to be six. So 6,000 at a thousand base. So a thousand base damage, I think is going to happen somewhere around maybe your thirties or forties. Um, somewhere in there, you're probably going to get to that thousand base damage. So we're not even in end game with these numbers. This is, this is pre level 50. So a thousand base damage times the base multipliers, right? So then we're going to do another 500% from all of our other multipliers. So we're going to do another times six. So that's 36,000 damage for your first trap over nine seconds. Okay. But we're going to be putting 12 of these traps down on, on the boss or the mob. So let's just assume it's a boss, right? So a single target, like blood Bishop. So single target boss, blood Bishop, no ads, right? So, this is the initial one. We have to multiply this by 12. So you are now going to do 432,000 damage over the course of nine seconds. Okay. If there are three rogues, then that 36,000 gets multiplied by 36. That's 1,296,000 damage before like obviously armor reduction from the monster level you know etc but it's important to note this is also not physical damage it's poison damage so armor values from the bosses and from mobs and from elites actually are 50 percent less than if it was physical damage because armor value uh, values 100 percent more to physical and 50 percent to elemental damage so elemental damage by itself is already a 50 percent increase to damage over physical 
but we're not factoring in monster level or uh, monster armor in, in this calculation. This is just a pure damage calculation before taking in those damage reductions. So we're at 1.296 million um, of the poison damage that could be done at a thousand damage base. So roughly around level 35, okay? Now, what is gonna happen is we're gonna bring back the most powerful class of all time right in, in diablo 4 rz druid the the main man the guy with the plan who's going to do an incredible amount of damage for all of us okay thanks to changeling's debt the druid doesn't need to do anything else but live he just needs to survive he needs to wait for all the rogues to get down their 12 stacks each get those 36 stacks stacked up on the boss and then he's going to come in and he's going to hit pulverize and pulverize is going to blow up all 36 of those stacks all 1.9 or 1.296 million damage is not going to happen over nine seconds it's going to happen instantly and not only is it going to happen instantly it's going to get multiplied and the druid is going to do 1.944 million damage in one tick. He is going to be the hardest hitting character in the game. No questions asked. That one aspect is going to do more work than any other aspect in the game. Now, as I mentioned, that was with a, a thousand base damage. So let's hypothetically bump it up a bit. Let's say your base damage with modifiers or whatever it may be goes to 10,000. Maybe that's a little high. Let's say your base damage is 5,000. Okay. Essentially, I mean, I mean, this is really easy. We just take that number we just did times five, right? So we pull this back. We'll just do this the easy way. We're just going to multiply it by five. Now that druid pulverize is going to do 9.72 million damage and this just keeps going right so if you uh if you get your base damage up to 10,000, you multiply this by two right so we're going to double our 5,000 base to two that druid pulverize is going to do 20 million damage and it's going to do it instantly in, in one click and <laughs> unless the bosses are extremely, extremely high HP, uh, this is just going to one-shot everything in the game. It, without question, it's just going to one-shot. Because at level 35, I guarantee you the, the bosses don't have millions and millions of health. So they're going to be able to walk in, literally just throw down a bunch of poison traps, press pulverize, and the boss is going to insta-delete. Whatever it is, is going to insta-delete. The only thing that's not going to insta-delete is if the boss has a multi-stage effect. If the boss has a multi-stage effect where, let's say, you hit it like a Izzel in D3, I think was his name, right? Where if you get him to 60%, he stuns you, it's forced, you can't actually one-shot him, you have to wait for phase two to start. You really only need your concealment to come back off cooldown to do the entire combo again. Uh, or at least to do the base level of that combo again um, until your Shadow Clone uh, can come back off cooldown. So it's either you kind of just wait out and just use your poison traps and have the druid uh, pop them again. So you go into concealment instead of throwing down 36, you're going to throw down 12 traps and just have the druid pop all 12 of them. But as soon as shadow clone comes back off cooldown, you can do the entire tech over again and hit the boss for another multi millions of damage. So, uh, it's broken. It's incredibly strong. This is going to do, an incredible amount of damage i have a feeling that if not prepared for and if the pinnacle boss is not multi-staged like diablo or Isol is in diablo 3 that this will straight up probably one shot the the final pinnacle boss if not you know if if no one stops this from happening or this doesn't get nerfed um, by the time 1.0 goes live this will absolutely have the possibility of one shotting the pinnacle boss uh, with a team of four uh, people stacking the poison traps on it. So that's it. Um, the rest of the stuff for the druid, I know we really didn't touch on this too, too much because it, a lot of it really doesn't matter. You're really just stacking defense. So you're making your earthen bulwark as strong as possible. 
you're making your debilitating roar immobilize poisoned enemies. Obviously, with all the rogues doing poison damage, you just roar and it immobilizes them. That adds back to that crowd control multiplicatives for the rogues. So everything that you, uh, when you immobilize them, all the rogues get their multiplicative crowd control percentages. This is where you're going to help your team. Um, Pulverize is now Earth skill, uh, and we'll do tectonic plates. This is just a benefit for pulverize. Um, Earth Guard aspect is extremely strong in this, right? Because this is a massive DR increase for the Druid, for our Z Druid who needs to stay alive. For every crowd controlled enemy, so obviously chilled or frozen or immobilized from your debilitating roar, then your uh, Earth and Boar can get 100% additional value. Um, so that's a massive DR increase of protection or EHP, effective HP. While you're unstoppable um, with your Earth and Borer Cup, you also move 25% quicker. You're going this. Your one fault on this team as the Z Druid who's doing the the big damages is you're going to be substantially slower than the Rogues, right? Because they have multiple multiplicative movement speed bonuses, and you're only going to have the one. So, well, the one in Trample. So you're going to have to try to keep up with the Rogues as much as possible. You are not the one who should be doing the objectives in the dungeons on your four-man team. You should be rushing to the boss door and waiting right so let the rogues in their you know flash level of movement go to each of the objectives get the objectives get them done you rush straight to the boss door and you sit there and you wait and you're waiting for your rogues to get done the rogues come over that you open the door to the boss you guys go in one shot the boss move on to the next dungeon move on to the next uh, part of the story to get to the pinnacle boss as fast um, you'll see i don't have a weapon or offhand because it really doesn't matter uh again you 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 are effectively uh, pointless in, in the damage calculation you were there to do all the damage from changeling's debt uh, ballistic aspect when you have fortify your earth skills gain plus two ranks so you're going to be fortified up 100 percent of the time this is just a nice bonus to make your earthen ball work even stronger uh, and more effective to keeping you alive because again if you're playing this in hardcore you have to be alive you you are the key to the plan so you need to survive um, and then restore primary resource uh, when you crowd control an enemy. So when you pop your debilitating roar on poisoned enemies from your rogue friends, uh, you can refill your primary resource extremely quickly. You're taking um, overpower damage uh, in case you have that ready when you're at the boss's door. It's just extra, you know, an extra added damage modifier on your pulverize when you pulverize that poison damage. It's a small, minuscule amount of damage, but it's something. Um, you're going to take damage reduction while fortified on your armor because you're going to be constantly fortified and you need as much DR as possible because you just need to be alive. You're also going to take all res. Down here on the spirit boons, you're going to take more damage reduction. Again, you need to live. Um, you're going to take maximum life. You need to live. You're going to take fortify for the 10% of your maximum life. When you use a defensive skill, you have two defensive skills. You're going to be popping this all the time um, to keep yourself fortified. You need to live. Every 10th kill will cause your next earth skill to overpower. This is just a nice to have. There's really no other better option. Critical strikes while shapeshifting heal you. So just on the off chance that you pulverize and it crits, you get some healing back because you need to live. It, whatever you want to use for a weapon or offhand, it, it doesn't matter. Um, you can fill in those slots as you please. So that's that's the combo, guys. It's, um, yeah, go do 20 million damage in uh, as a Z Druid with, with uh, no modifiers. Um, your Paragon survivability, just build whatever survivability you want. Again, you have no factor on the damage calculation side. Stack as much defense on this board as humanly possible and just wait for your rogues to get the stacks, pop Changeling's debt, do 20 million damage. Uh, enjoy seeing the biggest number on the screen of anybody playing Diablo 4. Thanks guys.